Now we're moving on to the shoulder joints, arms, uh, and the hands for the fingers. Uh, so uh, I'm going to do this in the top view here instead of the side view because if you see for the side view, it's kind of hard. Uh, I'm also going to template my geometry, which means uh, this geo layer that I have it toggled on over here in the display layers. Um, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. It's the only layer I got, so I don't need to be as tall as it is. Uh, but um, I can click this third button until we get to T, which is template mode. So now I can still see my wireframe, but it's not as... Um, overbearing as it was earlier. It's a little faded, a little gray. Easier to see my joints when I go to place them. So I'm going to say create joints and here we go. We're going to start off with the sternum, not the sternum, but the uh, clavicle, sorry, uh, that comes off of the sternum, right? And uh, that kind of is, is a little forward on your chest, um, right? If you kind of feel, that's, that's what I'm doing right now, is I'm taking my hand, kind of feeling on my shoulder uh, as, I, as I shrug it up and down. And I'm trying to feel where, like, where that pivots from. And it's just a little here in the front, kind of right here uh, and forward. Uh, so I'm going to click right here. And notice in that front view, um, that joint gets created at the world origin. We can move all of this stuff up later and adjust it in the front view after we get these initial joint placements. Uh, then I'm going to move out to the shoulder, which is going to be somewhere right about here. And again, I can adjust that here in a second. Much like our legs, hopefully you built a little bit of a bend in your arm. You don't have to be as much as Jean here, but just a little bit. I want to place that backwards a little bit and then forward for the wrist and kind of get that center mass. Uh, and then rather than going ahead and creating uh, the joints for each finger, I'm going to go ahead and stop it there and hit enter on my keyboard. I'm going to hit W with that first joint and move it up so that it is lined up with my geometry here. There we go. And we're seeing, take a look at this, right? Uh, first off, this first joint I know for a fact needs to be pushed in a little bit more. So the way I'm going to do that, instead of pushing the whole thing in and having to counter adjust, is just selecting that first joint, joint one, hitting D on the keyboard and pushing to the left and then hitting D again to solidify that movement. Cool. Shoulder placement actually looks pretty decent. We might hit uh, D just to move it back just a bit uh, so that that shoulder shape can be pulled down just a bit. Um, I'm kind of debating. I think that's fine actually. Elbow looks great, but take a look at this. Our wrist looks off set from our model. Uh, now this is because I just modeled it at a slight angle kind of going down. Uh, I do want to take a second to adjust this, not with the joint. I don't want to push the, I, I mean, technically, I could just do this, okay? And it's, the world's going to be okay. It's not going to end. Your rig will still work. But um, to keep things simple for you all, we're going to keep it in a straight line and match our geometry up to our joint. So I'm going to go to face mode here. I'm going to select all these faces. Oops. In this view, I'm going to turn off uh, joints. So I don't actually accidentally select joints. So I'm going to select all these faces, enable soft select and symmetry. So it does it to both sides. And I want to just really push that, that soft select a little bit. That way we get a nice gradual fall off rather than a harsh one. And with these faces, all I want to do is just push them up so that they're matching with that straight joint line. Um, and that just again is a technical thing. It's not necessarily an artistic thing. It's just going to help us out with these joint placements. Oops, uh, shading, extra joints. Oh, I've turned joints off. It's just going to help with our joint placements and that very technical aspect of building this rig. So before we move on to um, to the orientation of these joints, I just noticed in the top view, uh, the shoulder joint's a little too far forward. I just want to push it back so it kind of like centers up with everything there. Uh, and notice there, I, I still have my geometry, so I'm going to go back and make sure that's uh, in template mode. That way I'm not accidentally highlighting it or selecting it. I'm just focus on the joints again. Let's name these joints. L underscore shoulder. L underscore. Oh, I've already messed up. Shoulder. <laughs> so we're going to go back and say, this is the clavicle. That Because that is that clavicle that controls where the shoulder kind of like gets oriented. Then we get to the shoulder. Uh, then L underscore D. Elbow. <laughs> I apologize, uh, brain is, is functioning full capacity, I promise, this morning. Uh, and then L underscore wrist. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and put in the joints for our fingers. We're going to go up to the 
uh, create joint tool and I'm going to double click it to open up these tool settings because I want to enable something for this that really 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 helps us out before we go back and start worrying about our local rotation axes where is this projected centering uh, what this does and I do have to turn my model uh, you know on so that it, it's not templated or, or anything so uh, it, that just needs to be uh, ready for me to select because Maya needs that for this part of the tool to work uh, but I'm just turning projected centering on then I'm closing those tool settings back up and what this does is uh, let's show the polygons here if I click and drag this it you see how it's like actually I'm doing it in the top view so theoretically it should just kind of be um, either at the world center or anything and not and like on one plane but seeing this front view or in perspective right as I go down the thumb it's actually moving down, right? Because what Maya is doing is it's looking at all of the geometry in that area, uh, all of the edge loops, the vertices, and it's centering the joint up um, so that it actually uh, is in the middle of that geometry. And this is really nice when we create fingers. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna, oddly enough, I'm gonna start with a pinky and then I'm gonna work my way around the, the hand. So I'm gonna start over here. And I like to give an extra joint here. It's it's some it's easier to see with some people, other people less so. But if if we just take our hand and we take a look at it, right, and we start uh, uh, like you know moving our fingers back and forth, we can see all those tendons on the back of our hand pick up. Uh, and if we try to curl our thumb in, uh, like we can see, also we can do something very very similarly, but less successfully with our pinky, right? That first kind of joint leaving from the wrist. So we have these extra joints back here before we get to our first knuckle. I'm going to enable wireframe on shaded so I can see where those edge loops that I placed. Then we go to our next knuckle, our third knuckle, and then finally the tip of the finger. I hit enter to finish that. It's not parented to our wrist. Easy enough. We'll parent it to it here in just a second. Um, but I'm going to do all of that again for the ring finger and again for the middle finger so one two three four five enter one two three four five if we go too far it's it's that joint that actually didn't work or didn't mess up as much as I thought it would. But uh, if we go too far, sometimes I can mess it up. So I just like to go to the tip of the geometry there. Enter. And finally, the thumb. And I want to be very particular about where this joint gets placed. So somewhere back in here, we also get a little bit of extra rotation from that in the base of the wrist. One, first knuckle, second knuckle. and the end joint and hit enter so this will work for what I have but typically I do like an extra edge loop or something here uh, to really help define that but this will work for what we've got um, all right now the you could probably tell the joint orientation for these is gonna be a little tricky uh, so um, we'll do these individually I'll start with the pinky here and we will uh, open all these up and local rotation axis on. Actually, before we even do it for the fingers, let's just make sure that we've done it for the arm first. There we go. So let's do it for the arm. So X is pointing down, Y is pointing up, and Z is pointing forward. Uh, that'll work for us and our purposes here. Even how our wrist is currently oriented at the end is fine because, you know, again, X is pointing down. And we don't really want this wrist to be pointing down any particular finger joint we just kind of want to be pointing down the palm so if I wanted to I could just select this one go into the component mode uh, and rotate it just a little bit so that it's kind of pointing down the center of the palm kind of towards that middle edge loop there something along those lines uh, if I wanted to by no means is it necessary uh, what I want to do now is just make sure that the uh, orientation for each finger is also very similarly so local rotation axis and as long as this matches up with the arm, with X pointing down, Y pointing up, Z pointing forward, we are good. So I'm just going to take a real quick second to check out all of these new joints that I created. Well, we will go back and name these, by the way. 
And yes, it is tedious. <laughs> um, but yep, yeah, that's good. And again, I'm just making sure that all of these match up with the the wrist and the arm and etc. Right? X point down, Y is up, Z is forward. Uh, I know it's a little bit different from our spine and our legs, but that works in the long run. We don't have to worry about flipping with either of those X. Yep. The tricky one here typically is the thumb because the thumb, the way we've modeled it specifically, kind of going out and down, uh, sometimes, yep, there we go. So it sometimes can look a little odd on how the joints get oriented. So if we take a look, and I'm gonna go back to this index and turn on the local rotation axis for these. Maybe not that first one. It's gonna get visually cluttered there. There we go. Okay, so uh, if we look here, Y is pointing up, X is pointing down. So if you think about your knuckles, anytime you bend them, pretty much Y is always gonna be pointing directly out and away. But if we take a look at our thumb, it kind of gets jostled all over the place, right? So Y is pointing up, but it's not pointing out and away from the knuckle because my knuckle on this thumb, if we enable wireframe, you can see here, there's my thumb now, and there's my knuckle. It's pointing, you know, in another direction, right? It's going out in this direction. Uh, and my orientation doesn't represent that. So uh, I do want to orient these joints. Uh, this one might be a little tricky and we might need to be manual hands-on with this one. So I will do that. I'm gonna go in just manually adjust so that Y is pointing out for each of these knuckles uh, that are, you know, for a thumb kind of hidden within our hand, but they're still there, I promise you. Uh, same thing here, Y pointing out. Now the final joint, Again, it doesn't really super matter, but I will just try to match it up. Uh, because again, we don't uh, assign anything to this. It's just really to help that other joint figure out which way to point. And there we go. Oops, a little bit too far maybe. There we go. So now Y is pointing out and away from whoop, the knuckle. Maybe even, actually I think it's fine. We'll leave it as it is. Cool. All right, so let's select those and see local rotation axis off. And same thing for the index. Miss the joint. Boop. There we go. And miss it for the entire arm as well. So let's select those and turn those off. Uh, because now I can go and name all this stuff. Yay. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and just talk, <laughs> go to name it so you don't have to watch. Actually, this is a great time to talk about the search and replace tool. So with all, you know, for my pinky, it's just joint one, joint the blah, 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 blah. Well, I really want that to be specifically L underscore pinky. Uh, so I'm going to go up here to modify, search and replace. And this doesn't have to be as tedious as uh, what I was about to do. Let's go in manually and rename all these. I'm going to say selected because I don't want to actually do this for all of my joints. I just want to do it for the selected ones. And I want to make sure to select all of joint one, two, three, four, five that make up the pinky. And I'm going to say search for joint, replace with L underscore pinky. And say apply. Take a look at that. L underscore pinky one, two, three, four, five. Cool. So let's do that moving forward. Uh, search for joint, replace with L underscore middle. No, ring, apply. Rings, and then we get a little odd with ring six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's a little unfortunate there, but nothing too crazy. We can also, there's a way we can fix that too. So uh, we'll do this for the middle finger as well. And finally, for the index, I know I said finally, but also for the thumb, which is an actual finally. So again, the numbers are way, way off, but that's okay. All right, so I've got these joints. I need to parent them to the wrist now. I went through and renamed everything. Um, I'm just gonna select the first joint for each finger, uh, then the wrist and hit P on the keyboard. Boom, that's done. We're almost done with the arms. Um, but I really just want to take a second to, to add two extra features into these arms, uh, or to the arm, this arm rather. And, um, it's really just going to help us later on when we actually go to animate. It's, it's called twist controls. And, um, if you go to rotate your shoulder, you know, your it's kind of like a gradual rotation, or if you go to rotate your elbow, I guess I should say, it's kind of a gradual rotation from your shoulder to your elbow. And uh, same thing if you go to rotate your twist, it's kind of a gradual rotation from your elbow to your to your uh, wrist. So um, if that, what I just said doesn't make sense, don't worry, we'll kind of do some demonstrations in class as well as, as um, just kind of talk about it on our character here. 
So I'm going to add in twist controls in between my shoulder and elbow and my elbow and wrist. And uh, luckily in Maya, there's a really easy way to do that. It's up here under skeleton, insert joints. And the way this tool works is we click and drag from an existing joint chain and add in a, an extra joint in between. So I'm gonna do that for the shoulder. It's, I'm gonna undo what I did. So shoulder, I'm gonna try to put that as best I can perfectly between the shoulder and elbow. And then same thing, click and drag from the elbow to another joint between the elbow and the wrist. So again, this is gonna be super beneficial for us later on to help us uh, uh, counteract some twist problems. This is not complete for our joints though. We needed one more extra step. Because now you can see that we have extra joints here and you know our, our shoulders don't bend that way, right? You know, we, we don't have these extra rotations in the middle of our forearm and our bicep for the for those to exist. So we need to go back and fix our orientation and the uh, hierarchy of these joints, which ultimately means this elbow needs to be directly parented under the shoulder rather than parented under the uh, joint here that we just created. So I'm gonna select that elbow joint, then the shoulder joint and hit P on the keyboard. So now you can see that this joint just kind of ends and nothing kind of comes after it. Uh, but then the uh, the shoulder joint goes directly to the elbow. So that's great. We're gonna do the same thing for the wrist to the elbow. So select wrist and the elbow, holding shift, then hit P on your keyboard. So now these two are just kind of floating. If I enable their local rotation axis though, we can kind of, we see that it's the proper uh, rotation because we just inserted them and they're still parented under, um, here, let's see. Select this, hit F. They're still parented under the elbow. So if we look here in the elbow, there's that joint two. And if we look at the shoulder, there's that joint one. Uh, again, these are really nice for twist. So I'm gonna rename these to L underscore upper arm twist. And then uh, same thing for the other joint that we just created, L underscore. Uh, I could either name this lower arm or uh, forearm, but I'm gonna say lower arm twist. Uh, and again, those are going to be extra joints that are really, really going to help us out later on. I'll show you a couple different ways we can rig those up. We can be very complex with them or we can be really simple with them. Um, it's really your choice on that front. But uh, for now, that's all we really need. Click that and we're done with the arm joints.